Hello again. This is the fourth video um, concerning Julian Assange, and um, I, it, it, it's the fourth one about his horoscope. I did a slight detour in the last one uh, because of my distaste of a certain political intervention by a particular MP in, in England, which I found distasteful, and it seemed to take over things. But I'm hopefully back on track now by looking at the astrology of things. Of course, I've been asking myself, what's the value of this? Is there any value that we can add? Is there anything to be said that already isn't being said um, to contribute in some way to um, this man's plight and what he represents? Because there's no doubt in my mind, and if you remember, he has Neptune on the ascendant. And when people are caught up in uh, collective events, political events, strong elements of history, that the individual on the one hand and the collective forces on another, in, you know, they, they kind of combine to make a history. Um, there's a, a good point about it and a bad point. The a good point and bad point, it, it, it seems to be both, um, is that a particular individual can become a symbol and it's and particularly with Neptune on the ascendant, it's as if there's seeping through the particular being and the representation of this being as a center of activity. Um, that's the ascendant. Uh, when we see the personality of the person of Julian Assange, Assange and w what he is doing, what he is attempting to do, um, some people may say there's a misguidance there. Uh, others may see him as a hero in relation to the truth of things, to, as I say, um, find a kind of clarity through the mists of um, what is what, what we're supposed to be t t told, the, the stories and things. Um, uh, that's what he's doing. That Neptune thing there in Sagittarius is, 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 as he said himself, he's just... He's seeking to publicize the truth beyond the veil, beyond the veil of what the collective is usually given. But his, his cause has become symbolic. And the great, the, the bad thing, in inverted commas is what I was saying, the difficulty with that is that we may lose touch or lose sight of the actual person, the individual, the person at large, the um him as an individual human being and lose touch with his suffering. Although at such times, um, the, the the power of a symbol, if it if it um, if it's taken on by an individual, can find it channeling a tremendous amount of uh, force. Um, Neptune has porous boundaries, and it's as if uh, there has, there always is with Neptune, as I said in previous videos, a tendency to submerge oneself in a greater cause, a greater cause of the collective. And sometimes that uh, that uh, amounts to the person becoming a scapegoat of a kind, um, or uh, the, 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 the because he's taken on that uh, process of what he sees as an injustice to civilization, he has taken on a, a collective course. He himself has become a symbol, the symbol of the uh, now incarcerated voice. And that's what I want to look at um, um, in, in the videos here. But the situation has now become where if we're not careful we could lose touch with the individual so i'm going to look at his chart now to see and the um the transits at the time of his arrest yesterday approximately at 10 uh not yesterday on the 11th uh, approximately at uh, 10 15 in the morning so i'd like to uh, um share now um his horoscope um that we've seen before in previous videos but take a look now, this inner chart here is Julian Assange's um, natal chart, and the outer outer chart here is called a bywheel, and um, it's uh, again uh, uh, you have used uh, the, the wonderful tools found in Solar Fire to do this. Um, this inner wheel is uh, Assange, and the outer wheel are the transits on the day and time of his arrest. Now, it's quite interesting at the 
actual time of his arrest, we can see that what was rising on the ascendant was um, nine degrees Cancer, which is exactly conjunct within a degree um, his solar, his son, his natal son. It's as if we can see his son literally coming out of the unknown of the um, uh, and 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 rising before us just for that brief amount of time. And typical of the sun in the eighth, it's somewhat occluded, somewhat obscured behind what was going on. Those forces which um, were taking him and imprisoning him, and placing him in a, in a vehicle. But nevertheless, we saw him emerge there. I find that quite interesting because. Um, it's as if a symbol of um, uh, 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 real importance, because the ascendant is what is rising, what's being brought to birth. And this individual, as I say, is, is a representative of that coming out of the Ecuadorian embassy. Now, if we come down here, we see both Saturn and um, Pluto is opposed to his Mercury. Now you see this Pluto is only within one degree um, uh, and it takes about a year till um, till next year, actually February, around about February 2020, when this Pluto again is here, but Saturn joins it around about 21, 22, 23 degrees, and, but it's within orb. And so I've often found with transits that some event, some externalization of of the process that's going on through transits uh, often appears in the surface something usually triggers it so around about one or two degrees we often see these events and as you can see pluto is opposed to his mercury Mercury here in the ninth house, um, trying to this Jupiter and Neptune, I pointed out, is the finding out of the internal secrets, those things behind the veil. Uh, he's chosen to do, to uh, penetrate the um, the military, particularly the military industrial complex. All those forces um, are working behind the scenes to do various things or another, and of course um, uh, commit crimes as well. Now that is an arguable, arguable legally and so on. And uh, I think this is what this is all about. You see, because the ninth house has a lot to do with the immediate, um, the, the, the publications, the, uh, the bringing to um, bringing to the public attention, or all of those bits of information. This is the class. All of those bits of information that are of public interest. Now, the third house is personal interest. It's the local vicinity. It's our, it's our own language. It's our own basic education. It's where we walk around our local area. But it, it's, it's not something of um, global or um, uh, larger uh, full-scale interest. And so the ninth house is here to do with publishing, with broadcasting, and, of course, to do with journalism. That word journal, to journal things, is to write what's going on. And journalism has to do with revealing those things in life that, that are going on, revealing the truth of them, as opposed to uh, what is being given as the truth through certain um, uh, authoritative bodies. I think it was called the fourth estate. Was it Edmund Burke? I can't remember. Uh, one of the philosophers that, you know, where people are looking at those people that rule and bringing them to account. So this Mercury, the representative of the, he's the god of communication, the god of byways and highways is Mercury, Hermes. He can go in anywhere, he can somehow uh, move through things, he can go into the underworld, into the unconscious, he can bring things to light, he can fly around, he, 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 he doesn't have any particular temples to him, I don't think, in the Greek uh, idea of Mercury, because he, he's on the highways and byways. You, his, um, his, his temples can be met where two places meet. He's the planet of exchange and communication. And in psychological astrology, it's how we personally process information. But you can see that it's the most elevated planet and is very important in Julian Assange's horoscope. This he has taken on if somehow to pierce the veil, the uh, murky waters of what goes on in secret and hidden places. So this is under attack. Now, 
and it's under attack by these oppositions. Now, what this will mean on a personal level, if I was seeing somebody in my office, I would say that this is going to be um, a, a period of a particularly heavy mental distress. This is obviously uh, the person is being incarcerated and in fear of being extradited to a country which might lock him up in a dark room and we may never see him again. Um, uh, clearly this Saturn and Pluto elements are conspiring against or opposed to the voice of this uh, individual. And of course, uh, he was never an individual by himself because he uh, created a wiki, which was a particular kind of pro computer program, which enabled an interaction. So whether this proves to be an exchange between WikiLeaks or whether the WikiLeak phenomenon was a, a kind of post box of which you either received information and distributed it, I think this is all going to be um, to do with the legal elements of it. Now, so when we see Pluto going into the third, um, I, I would always uh, suggest that the person um, is going to have to undergo, if, if not the, to, to break down their mind, uh, they have to go, undergo a, a series of trainings in many ways in mental hygiene. The negative thinking patterns are going to come across. There's an impressive, uh, an oppressive element here. And if not careful, could fall into depression, if not outright paranoia and difficulty. Pluto is that fear, the hidden fear of death along the, along the path. Somehow he, he represents that voice that something is passing out of life. That uh, distance and call from the, from the deep, from the deep. Um, Liz Green, in her wonderful book, The Astrology of Fate, describes Pluto as the goddess of fate. And by fate means necessity, these things which have to happen to us, the things which are not within the bounds of our ego. And in this sense, we can see this depicting quite symbolic, uh, symbolically as, as what you might call the dark state. Those people in authority which uh, rule from the underworld, in many ways we could see this as a criminal element, um, but when it's coming from, from within the state uh, uh, states or those people that govern in power, we have a very difficult um, and uh, very powerful enemy or foe indeed. This is because what's happening with this uh, Pluto opposed to Mercury, if we see it in these terms, is that this is the voice that wants to silence this. This is the voice which wants to control and oppress. And when these are coming together, there is a sense that this is a landmark case, both for journalism and for people which want to speak the truth. Is the First Amendment uh, still uh, uh, available to, to American people? Or is it the fact <clears throat> that because you s reveal things that uh, are behind the veil, I suppose, to, I suppose, that this is in some way illegal? Um, ille illegal. So this Pluto Saturn here represents an oppression of the mind to Julian Assange. It probably is the end of his journalistic career in some way. But Pluto is never, never says it's entirely a, a death as such. Pluto represents the decay of things because they have to decay. It's the forcing voice of evolution. Things have to go out of the system. So what we get here is this plutonic force opposing the um, the, the individual no uh, uh, the individual voice the communication if you like his 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 sense of what he has to say uh, uh, um, uh, and taking that into the public but he isn't alone. So I said before this Pluto is in the eleventh house here and so from a personal perspective. Pluto has also has many friends, it's a classic uh, association of the 11th house, both in the public sense and in those, all of those subversives, the subversive people and those people working, if you like, to voice justice um, and, and, and uh, bring out from those uh, 
bring out certain things from from underneath which may even threaten those people in the collective of um, uh, a considerable power to oppress and to um, shut out uh, the the lone voice and so how what i see here is that i rather like this sextile between mercury and pluto in the um in the 11th house and this means that um julian assange has spent uh, much of his life trying to find out what is in the unknown what is beyond the veil of the known because pluto we remember is hades he he the the representation of the the unconscious the 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 dark the corrupt in many ways sometimes uh, uh, intrinsically it's not corrupt but in the world um people the, the the collective survival instinct is very powerful and people they do all kinds of things in 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 order to make sure that they themselves are not going to succumb to uh, belittlement and loss of power because make no mistake about it Pluto, in a political sense, is always to do with power and who is in control. So we must watch out then. Probably um, next year in February, there will be a likely extradition, but there are powerful friends. And it's up to, in many ways, the forces of the collective themselves, the forces that believe um, that this voice, this lone voice, should not be shut out and should not be silenced or kept in a dark room. Finally, I wanted to say that these elements here, because Pluto is opposed to Mercury, this is in some way a... A, a, a force of providence saying that it is now time that this lone voice was made public and i think this arrest in my sense of it it will lead to to the law of unintentional consequences because what julian assange revealed in 2010 particularly about vault seven and um, collateral murder as it was called the video and various lots of other things about of afghanistan and uh, iran and so on um no, not iran uh, iraq um what 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 he that was the real problem and that's where he had to go into hiding in the ecuadorian embassy but the law of unintended consequences is that those people that don't know about that of course are going to be shown uh john pilger himself has called for the information that uh, julian assange uh, revealed at that time to be made known in other words, to create a kind of public case for all those who believe in, in the cause. And it could well be that the powers of the collective, the powers of this 11th house, those voices and organizations and uh, somewhat subversive, will come out and uh, oppose, if you like, the, the other collective voices of um, those in uh, the dark state or the control from the, from, the un, uh, from the hidden regions of the world, but nevertheless have a state control over what happens to lesser mortals. We shall see. Well, I think that's uh, about it for now. Um, uh, I'd just like to show, as I say, what was going on in Julian Assange's chart in order to get some idea about uh, how astrology and uh, w w what it can show and what it can reveal, and I suppose what it can and cannot do. Um, it doesn't show an absolute set future. What it represents is the particular energies and patterns uh, that are going on both in his personal life and as a collective symbol. And as I said before, the danger in doing this is that we mustn't just see this as, as mustn't just see Julian Assange as a symbol but as a person who probably has a, a great deal of conflict within him, which is being brought out at this time. So Pluto is both within and without. It threatens to destroy, but could ultimately uh, transform him in some way that we yet don't know, and maybe even transform politics in a way that as yet is unforeseen. Cheerio.